Well, good morning. It is a Monday morning and we are solidly in Leo. Welcome to Leo, everyone. Leo is kind of in, uh, important to the those of us of the, the Thelemic uh, uh, bent uh, in so much as uh, uh, the path of Leo on uh, the tree of life, or at least the tree of life that uh, is commonly used among modern magicians. Uh, uh, the path of Leo, or the strength card, or in Crowley's uh, case, the lust card, uh, joins path four and five on the tree of life. It's the second horizontal path on the tree of life. There's, there's three of them. There's uh, uh, the top one joins uh, two and three, and that's uh, the path of Daleth or the Empress or Love. Okay. The middle one uh, joins four and five, and uh, somewhere in in Crowley's. Uh, personal musings, I guess we'd say, he considered uh, the, the personage or the existence or the, the mechanism of, of what has been traditionally called uh, the beast, okay? And for that, we have to, you know, get ourselves enmeshed in the terminology of, uh, of uh, both Hebrew and kind of Christian mysticism, the way they look at the, the the last book of the New Testament, the book of the Revelation of John, uh, that Crowley considered his incarnation. You know, Crowley called himself the Beast Six Six Six. He considered his in, his incarnation sort of a, a, a synchronicity with uh, the age of Horus that had uh, uh, just uh, dawned, or the aeon of Horus had just dawned about the turn of the century. And that his incarnation, in a way, as the B666, uh, uh, was a reflection of the, the activation, if you will, or, uh, of the, that path, that path of... Uh, of Leo uh, on uh, the tree of life, on sort of a universal tree of life, okay, and which is a which is a pretty high in the circuitry of uh, of the cosmos. Be that as it may, uh, I was thinking on those. Uh, those ideas this morning, and somewhere on my Facebook uh, page, someone had had posted a marvelous uh, uh, comment about uh, "Don't talk to me about the universe uh, being represented by mathematics if you really don't know much about mathematics." Okay, and it's it really a, it was a great, great, wise and and uh, very intelligent uh, uh, comment, uh, and, and it it sort of said, "Now hold on, you know, it's, you're sort of jumping to conclusions when, when you, uh, uh, you know, arrogantly tell people that the the universe is, uh, 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 you know, revealed in mathematics when you don't know your mathematics from a, you know." And, and the, the the person making that comment was that was absolutely right. But it it, it got me thinking because uh, uh, Kabbalah uses simple simple mathematics to talk about uh, you know profound cosmological concepts. And so uh, I, I turned to the rabbi in uh, Chicken Kabbalah, and I thought I'd share this with you uh, today because uh, it's not to uh, criticize in any way the, the 
brilliant comment that uh, uh, I tried to look it up for today's thing. I couldn't find it again. Uh, but I, I just like to uh, throw in the rabbi's two cents. Uh, it's his comment on the 10th command rant, which is look hard enough at anything and you'll eventually see everything. Uh, the object of your observation can be anything at all. Kabbalists have learned, however, that some things reveal divine connection, reflection patterns easier than others. Mathematics, and here's the rabbi walking on that thin ice of presumption. Mathematics is the most profound example because it lays bare to the tenacious student the very structure of the universe. Language is another excellent tool for spiritual dissection because by its very nature, it's a vehicle of connections, reflections, and patterns. Language evokes and transfers images from mind to mind in a manner not too dissimilar to the creative fiat of the mythological gods of creation. Let there be light, and there was light. Let there be pig, and there was pig. But don't touch. Okay, Orthodox Kabbalists believe that Hebrew is the most sacred of all languages and that the letters of the Hebrew alphabet are both building blocks of creation and the tools that put them all together. They believe the scriptures were divinely inspired and originally written in Hebrew to veil and reveal layer upon layer of ever-deepening spiritual truth. Certainly, for devoted Jewish capitalists, this is the case. Whether or not there's any historical validity to their belief or the foundation of their scriptures or not, doesn't matter. As a chicken capitalist, I have the greatest respect for the remarkable ways parts of the Bible yield astounding treasures to the tinkering student. Furthermore, I give thanks to the great Polterer that we have at our disposal a vast body of sectarian literature, hundreds of years of self-referential material, including classic Kabbalistic texts that employ biblical passages as springboards for the most illuminating exegesis. This material remains the foundation of our study, whether or not we choose to embrace any of the religious aspects of the work. And this, dear students, is what separates us, or chicken Kabbalists, from our Orthodox brothers and sisters. We are not Kabbalists to prove the Bible is holy. We're Kabbalists because everything is holy. Look hard enough at anything and you'll eventually see everything. Right now, right where you are, God is talking to you from the pages of the Bible, the Koran, the Vedas, the funny papers, billboards, street signs, ticket stubs, and automobile license plates. We don't always have to be quick to tinker with the letters and numbers we use when we use the techniques of Gamatri or Naterakon or Tamura, we're perpetually bombarded by countless numbers nestled within the billions of impressions we process each day. How many times do we write the date? What is 57 doing on, the jar, on a jar of pickles? We listen to the top 40, watch the news at 7, go to work by taking the 405 freeway to the 55, to the 5, to the 101. 
Ancient Kabbalists didn't spend much time on the turnpike and probably didn't listen to the top 40. What they did do was spend a lot of time studying the scriptures. And as the R10 command rant informs us, the scriptures are certainly as holy as pickles. As a matter of fact, the Bible is already crawling with numbers. Perhaps you'd like a better understanding of what Ezekiel was talking about in his famous vision. A clue or a start of a chain reaction of ideas. A clue might be found in the very first chapter and verse of his book. In English it reads, now it came to pass in the thirtieth year of the fourth month of the fifth day of the month, I was among the captives by the river Chabar, that the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. I personally don't think it was important for Ezekiel to make sure we all knew the exact publication date of his book. I do, however, think that he want us, wanted to make it perfectly clear that he might be writing about something other than his psychedelic escapades with flying saucers, four-headed aliens, and dancing skeletons. In the first verse, we find the numbers 30, 4, and 5, where the Hebrew letters Lama, Daleth, and He, or the Hebrew word Lama, Daleth, He, I don't know how to pronounce it, which means birth. Lama Dalit Hey, birth. The second verse has a similar message. In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehobachin's captivity, okay, we find five, which is the Hebrew letter Hey or H, repeated. Hey, hey, which actually means window. A window is something through which we observe. It's all, it also permits light to enter. Birth, the result of penetrating light. Light penetrating where? The book of Ezekiel sounds a little more intriguing now, doesn't it? Take a peek at how chapter 8 starts out. And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, that I sat in mine house, and the elders of Judah sat before me, and the hand of God fell upon me. We find the number 6, 6, and 5. And now, just in my superficial uh uh, research, I couldn't find any s significant words that jumped out at me anyway, spelled vav vav hey, or even hey vav vav. But when I put the three numbers together side by side, I see the number 665, which is the sum of the Hebrew words which mean the womb, which certainly seems to carry on the theme that was started in chapter 1 verse 1, light penetrating the womb which gives birth. Gives birth to what? Chapter 20th may, uh, may tell us. It begins with even more numbers. And it came to pass in the seventh year, in the fifth month, in the tenth day of the month, that certain elders of Israel came to inquire of the Lord and sat before me. The number... Add those together, the number is 7,510. Well, we can really get bogged down on numbers that large, but if we reduce 10 to, to 1, uh, we get the number 751, which is the sum of the Hebrew word finished man or perfected man. Thus, by investigating the numbers that are mentioned openly in these four verses, we find ourselves teased with the concept of light penetrating the womb, giving birth to the perfected man. 
Was that the message that Ezekiel was trying to convey? Probably not. But who cares? Whatever it was the old boy was originally trying to say shrinks to insignificance. It's far more important to my spiritual enlightenment that my mind was forced to churn at breakneck speed to put all of this together and then open itself up to the infinite potentialities of meaning. Look hard enough at anything and you'll eventually see everything. It doesn't have to make very much sense what you connect to what. It, it's all ultimately connected. Don't you see? The Kabbalah doesn't enable me to merely interpret what someone else meant to say. It forces me to hear what I need to hear. Each time I make another connection on paper, I'm creating a new connection in my head, or perhaps reattaching a connection that was disconnected from the heads of our ancestors vast years ago. I'm one step nearer to the realization that everything in heaven and earth is connected to everything in heaven and earth quantum entanglement. I'll now leave Ezekiel to the pizza cutter of your own wit. Time is short and I must get on with the subjects of Gamatria, Noterakon, and Timura. Okay, that's my little excursion visit with Rabbi Lamed Ben Clifford and my thoughts about uh, the importance of or the insignificance of uh, mathematics in your uh, spiritual med meditations. So Constance and I have errands to run today. We got to go get some mulch. So until tomorrow, continue to be good to yourself, be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will.